Welcome back and thank you for staying with the broadcast. Endorsed candidate for the Labour Party in the Soufre Fosseja constituency, Emma Hippolyte, has expressed her disdain with the recent spate of violent activities occurring in her hometown of Soufre. Hippolyte says she has taken it up on her own to engage the youth in her community and to help guide them along the right path, as well as encourage them to find alternate ways of resolving conflict. Recently, two young men were injured by masked assailants in Soufre. Members of the community have indicated that the majority of such incidents, when they do occur, are gang-related. Candidate on the Labour ticket for Soufre Fonseca Jacques, Emma Hippolyte, has disclosed that she is on the ground and working with members of the community to help resolve the social ills that are plaguing the community and thus leading to violence. I believe what really has to happen, which we started, is to try to bring the groups together with the parents, I started engaging the young people and could not believe the, um, the reflection in terms of problem solving and conflict resolution. And it is very much a signal for me that we have so much work to do, especially with our young men. We have engaged them, we've had one or two meetings with them. We will continue doing so, but it is an indication to me that we need to really get persons who are really trained in that area to come in and engage them um, in terms of, of how they should see each other. Um, the other thing I, I saw very clearly was the fact that we have such high unemployment and there's, there's a sort of an anger and a frustration. Hippolyte says she is on a mission to gain community peace among the various male groups in her hometown, as well as show them that there is a silver lining, even during times of adversity, anger and despair. She indicated that she is privy to the high levels of work it will take to achieve such, but she believes she is in a position to help. We have work to do with our young people. And even you know, when you engage them and you are having the discussion, you can see they are almost lost in terms of where they want to go and how they want to get there. So you need a lot of most motivational... In addition to conflict resolution, you need to motivate them. To, you need to show them that they have within them the ability to move forward and to achieve with the right training. So it's a lot of work with our young people, but I'm very hopeful that if we keep at it uh, with the right skill sets, speaking and role models, um, we will make a breakthrough. She indicated that the young men in the Sufra community are being engaged and in the upcoming days, a lot more will be done to incite change in her hometown. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Janine Vonda. The International Council for the Advancement of Rastafari has announced plans for its annual general meeting and is urging members to come out and play their part in ensuring the success of the council's efforts. The executive of the International Council for the Advancement of Rastafari is calling on its members to be in attendance at its annual general meeting in the coming weeks. ICAR member Valence James says what began as a bright year for the organization was quickly hindered by the COVID-19 pandemic. However, now that things have begun to normalize, the organization is asking members to come together to plan a way forward which will allow the organization to meet its goals for 2020. I'm here to really sound the trumpet and to let members know that uh, the AGM is coming up and we want people to really come in in their great numbers to support the organization. Um, the year 2020 started off really good for the organization, um, but of course due to the covid you know, virus thing which affected us all. Um, it's kind of put a little spoke in our wheel, sort of, but we want people to know that things have been going on um, nicely, but just under the scenes, behind the scenes. Um, but we want the members to come together. James says a tentative date and location have been selected for the meeting. However, future announcements will be made to guide members. Tentatively, we're looking at the Miku Secondary School at 1 p.m. So we want brethren and sisters to know that coming on the 28th, which is Sunday, the last Sunday in this month, um, June 28th again, we'll be having that meeting at uh, 1 o'clock at the Miku Secondary School. Members are asked to direct any questions pertaining to the AGM to a member on the executive team of ICAR. 
Jaco Winning, Hot 7 News. In keeping with transparency efforts, the Department of Health and Wellness is providing the nation with an update of the COVID-19 pandemic. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar george gives the details. As of June 8, 2020, the World Health Organization reported a total of 6,931,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 globally, with 400,857 deaths. Within the region of the Americas, there was a total of 3,311,387 cases. As of June 9, 2020, St. Lucia has recorded a total of 19 confirmed cases of COVID-19. 18 of those cases have fully recovered. The last case was a repatriated cruise national and was recorded on June 4, 2020. St. Lucia continues to receive repatriated nationals. These include students, cruise workers, and residents who were stranded during the border closure. They are required to undergo the 14-day quarantine at a government-designated facility. Testing is done as per protocol. During the last few weeks, the testing strategy focused on the testing of frontline workers and the repatriated cruise ship nationals we also continue testing the patients who access care at the respiratory clinics and the community level. Over 67 physicians and nurses were tested and over 152 fire service and emergency medical technicians and fire service officers were tested at this time. We continue to note negative test results for the frontline workers and persons who access care at the respiratory clinics. We've carried out a total of 1,204 tests to date. The Ministry of Health and Wellness would like to alert the public that as we open up the sectors, the risk of transmission increases. We can reduce this risk by ensuring that public health and social measures are maintained. We also anticipate new cases. However, if we all comply by the guidelines and maintain them, the possibility for transmission is minimized. Although our focus has been on COVID-19, we must prepare for the hurricane season as it commences on June 1st. This period of increased rainfall also signifies increases in vector-borne diseases such as dengue fever and leptospirosis. We advise the public to pay special attention to their immediate surroundings to ensure it is clean and not providing a breeding ground for mosquitoes and rats. The vector awareness plan by the Ministry of Health will be launched later this month. As always, we continue to ask that everyone continues to sanitize their hands by either hand washing or using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, wearing their masks while undertaking daily activities out of home and to maintain the required six foot distance. Also, be sure to cover your mouth and nose with disposable tissues or clothing when coughing and sneezing. These simple and inexpensive actions will make a meaningful difference in preventing the spread of infection. The Department of Health and Wellness, we will continue providing you with regular updates on COVID-19. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. When we come back, we'll have school sports and the latest weather update.